Welcome to the Blue Collar Consulting Group Podcast. Everything done better. All right, and welcome to another episode of the Blue Collar Consulting Group Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Gary Roth, active duty soldier, United States Army business owner, podcast host, dad, uh, and a couple other things that I probably shouldn't repeat on here. But we are here, I am here, to talk with you about uh, productivity. I'm coming to you with 11 time management hacks that should help you uh, skyrocket your productivity. Big shout out to redbooth.com, who was the uh, inspiration for this particular podcast. And I thought maybe I'd share their 11 points and maybe expand on it quite a bit. So let's get right to it. You know me, I don't like a lot of fluff. Here we go. Number one, create a to-do list. All right. When you are attempting to be productive, like right? when you're setting out to be productive, literally the first thing you can do outside of deciding to be productive is to freaking build yourself a list. Build yourself a list, write down what you want to get done and freaking put it somewhere where you can't avoid it. However you want to do it, okay? You could do it for the week, the month, the year. Obviously, you should have a big goals list for your life, uh, but really, I recommend doing a to-do list for uh, uh, what you want to do. And I'm going to have a link in the video that I'm recording. I'll have a link in the show notes about the Panda Planner. It's the planner that I use. The way that they lay out their pages are amazing. Uh, I used, I think, Brendan Burchard's uh, productivity planner. Didn't really like it that much, but the Panda Planner is cheap. It's laid out nicely for 90 days and it's really cool. So the first thing you've got to do is create a to-do list. You know, we will, down the road, we will go over what I think are some good and important things to have on your to-do list and really how to break it down. But for right now, if you're just trying to up your productivity, first thing, create that to-do list. Now, once you have everything written down, now, if you really want to skyrocket your productivity, if you really want to take your time management to the next level, once that first run of the list is written down, what you've got to do, what you absolutely positively must do is reevaluate and prioritize what's on there, right? So, Maybe you don't start off your day uh, recording a podcast episode. Maybe you get those stinky dishes done, right? Maybe that'll be the first jump start. Have you ever heard of the phrase called eating the frog? Well, eating the frog means that you do the most undesirable, the least desirable task that you have. You do that first. And so once that's out of the way, then that's going to kind of give you a boost. It's going to build some momentum. For instance, I hate to fold laundry. I don't know why. I love clean laundry, but I hate to fold my laundry. And so when I am freaking working on stuff, usually the first thing I'm going to do is go in there and fold that stinking laundry. So once you have your to-do list, reevaluate, reevaluate everything, prioritize it, and then rewrite the list, but in an optimized order. Next thing, you're just going to have to stop procrastinating. If you, um, you know, if you're trying to be productive, if you're trying to increase your time management skills and things like, you, you got to stop. I mean, that's just all there is to it, my friends. You've got to stop. You've got to freaking get going, and you got to get after it now. One thing that I recommend, if you're having trouble with procrastination and it falls back onto your to-do list, create micro tasks that you can do that last less than five minutes. For instance, if you can't pull yourself away from a video game, next time you get up to go to the bathroom, promise yourself that you will do five minutes of laundry folding, all right? Or promise yourself that when you go refill your Mountain Dew, you know what I'm talking about, when you go refill your Mountain Dew, then unload the dishwasher, right? So by doing those things, I can speak from personal experience that when you do those things, uh, it builds momentum into other things. Like for example, for me today, you know, I had a little trouble getting going, but sitting down, uh, talking with a former boss of mine, who's a little bit of a mentor. Thank you, Sergeant Spark. You're amazing. Uh, to write that, to sit down and do a video while I do my next podcast. Boom. Got it. Here I am. Video's going. Microphone is on. Got my list and I'm feeling great. So, so that's that. So stop procrastinating, do micro tasks, get going, do your thing. Do your thing. Uh, next on this list here, they, they have a plan out your time. So when you plan out your time, uh, that's a really good idea to do. And let me tell you why, because it's going to give you the left and right limits so that you don't overburden yourself. For example, if you say, all right, 
I'm going to work on the house on house projects from 8 a.m. until noon. So during that 8 a.m., I'm going to schedule an hour block for doing dishes. I'm going to schedule an hour block for folding laundry. And I'm going to schedule uh, some time blocks for, let's say, vacuuming, right? So obviously, be responsible with your time, okay? Don't, don't cheat the system. But at the same time, if you get it done, that's bonus time, baby. That means you get a few more minutes on Netflix. So... One of the great things, plan out your time. You, you can look at that and you can say to yourself in your mind, like, hey, look, I'm only doing four hours of chores today. I have the rest of my day to do whatever the H I want. All right. So planning out your time is awesome. Okay. So next tip, tip number five, boom, number five is to avoid multitasking. All right. Now, this is something I have a lot of trouble doing. I like to do a bunch of things all at once. La, 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 do this, do that, whatever. That just doesn't work. Okay, it just doesn't work. So I want you to avoid multitasking at all costs. Sit down, do a task. If it's only for five minutes, do that task for five minutes and then move on to the next thing. Don't try to do a bunch of things at once. Um, you know, like if you're trying to uh, write a blog post and you're freaking trying to balance your budget or write in your journal or something like that, just don't do that. Instead, like we said before in step number four, plan out your time, f stick to that time and focus on one task only before you move on to the next one. Okay. So when you do that, you have your full attention, you can knock it out. It's going to be like 10 times better and it's just better. It's smart. Okay. And I want you to be smart and I'm pretty sure you're smart. Rule number six, step number six, thing number six, find your groove, all right? Now, this is going to take a little bit of, you know, planning and writing down an evaluation, or as we say in the Army, an after-action review, an AAR. You're going to have to do that when you uh, complete certain things and as time goes on. Like, for instance, if you write down your plan for three or four weeks in a row, you get your stuff knocked out, you may find that starting at 8 a.m. isn't so isn't such a great idea. All right. You're a little too tired, whatever. Or you might find that recording a podcast episode at night after you've been at work all day or at an annoying conference for 12 hours might not be the best time to record your podcast. Might be better to wait until Saturday morning. Right. So you've got to find your groove. You have to do those after action reviews. OK, you've got to figure out what works for you and then and then be intentional about uh, planning that out in a way that's effective for you and effective for moi, me. So find your groove. Okay, number seven. Oh, man, do away with distractions. You're going to have to put away your cell phone. No, you're going to have to put away your cell phone. You're going to have to turn off the email. Do away with distractions. Distractions slash multitasking. Sorry, my friends, doesn't work. If you try to look at your phone and listen to a podcast and freaking watch a video and write a blog post all at once, you're distracted, you're deluded, you're multitasking, it's not going to work. You're not going to be your best. You're just not. So do away with those distractions, okay? Promise you it'll be worth it. And yes, that email can wait an hour, okay? I promise you that. That phone call, granted, I know emergencies are emergencies. That's why they're called emergencies. But we need to stop making things emergencies. Distractions are not emergencies. If you don't answer that cell phone, you're not going to die. Your mother's phone call about... Her Wi-Fi password can wait. That that cat meme can wait. Listen, friends, I love you. Get rid of those distractions. That's why you may have to limit your time to five minutes. Look, that's okay, guys and gals, everything in between. That's okay. But limit yourself to where you're at on your limits. If you can only be away from your cell phone for five minutes, I'm not here to judge you, okay? I'm probably right there with you. Maybe two or three minutes. It's terrible. Then I'm going to schedule a five-minute block of just folding laundry. I'm going to tell myself I'm going to go fold laundry for five minutes without my phone and then I'm going to come on back. It's okay to be where you are. Just work around yourself, all right? It's going to be effective. Step number eight. This is a really good thing. Dedicated workspace, right? So don't do work from home in your dining room or in your bedroom or in your kids room or in your living room because that's not this is not going to work right there's going to be distractions there's going to be kids and animals and everybody else running through there lord if you have roommates or if somebody's watching tv just don't do it have a dedicated secluded workspace even if it's just around a curtain or whatever else something phys some physical barrier that must be moved in order for you to 
have your workspace. My neck just cracked really bad. Oh man, that's crazy. So have that dedicated workspace. Make sure that uh, there's some type of physical barrier. Okay, it, it's going to help. There's story after story of successful people working from home, working remote, working in all these places that they need that physical barrier and they suffer without it. So that dedicated workspace with a physical barrier of some type. Okay, you want to be productive? You want to you want a time management hack to skyrocket your productivity? Here's one. Number nine, stand up, get moving, get off your booty, right? Get up, get a little physical motion, learn about Tony Robbins and his physiology stuff about how you got to like stand up and you got to get big and you got to spread out. He even talks about this story about like the study of blind people when they would win a race and they were told they were a winner. They have been blind for life and yet they extend their arms and they get big and it's, it's a physiology thing that helps you, you know, be awesome and amazing. And it's funny because blind people have never seen anybody do that and yet they do that naturally. So stand up. Get yourself moving around, smile and dial if you're doing any kind of inbound or outbound marketing or sales calls, stand up, do your thing. Look, number 10, you're going to like this. Get some rest. Okay, there's, you know, there's like two types of rest, right? And this is my very limited knowledge of the subject, but there's two types of rest. There's physical rest and there's brain rest. Physical rest, that's easy. Stop lifting weights after you're tired. Sit down, put your feet up, recline, recline on the couch. Or get good quality sleep. And I'm not here to tell you how much quality sleep you need. That's not my role. That's for you to figure out. But I can tell you this. It's more than an hour and it's less than 10. So uh, whatever that means for you. But I know that quality sleep is important. You're going to have to turn that screen off like an hour before bed. I don't know that I even. And if you're going to read, read something relaxing. Don't read something that's going to charge you up. Right. But get some rest. You got to recharge those batteries. If you ever want to have any kind of time management strategies at all, you got to get the rest. So make sure and rest make sure to meditate, whatever that means to you, recharge your batteries on a daily basis and then have a big recharge uh, every week. I try to do that on Sunday, right? Like try to have, like for me, I go to church. That's fine. Uh, if you don't, but like you get that recharge. Sometimes I go to my farm uh, in central Missouri and get some fresh air, which is amazing. It's amazing. Shout out. What's up, Boonville? And so I encourage you to do something similar. Get that physical rest. Get that brain rest where you turn your brain off. You don't do or think about anything and just make it happen. So finally, 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 probably one of the most like next level, big, big time time management hack number 11 is to trust in others. Now let's talk about, let's break that down super easy what that means. Trust in others. So like you've got to be able to trust people with delegation. So stop trying to be the hero. Stop trying to boil the ocean and start learning how to trust and hire people to extend yourself in a certain way. There are virtual assistants, physical assistants. There are services programs that you can throw a few bucks at and you can do amazing things and it'll free you up. It will allow you to think of these next level things um, and to do the right thing. But if you, if you are one of these assistants, then you know that it's important to trust others. you got to trust the person that hired you. They have to trust you. You've got to trust the people that you work with. So trusting in others is probably one of the most pivotal, crucial, next level time management hacks. You can spread yourself out, right? You can spread yourself out without diluting yourself, right? Build a network, my friends. Get the help you need. Get the assistance you need. Get the advice you need. Get the outside XYZ. Get a therapist. Get into some therapy, right? Make yourself better. Make yourself feel better. Listen, that's an amazing list. Check it out. It's create that to-do list and then reevaluate it, prioritize. You got to stop the procrastination, plan out your time, get rid of multitasking, get rid of distractions, find that groove, do that evaluation, find out what works best. Got to have that dedicated workspace. Get off your butt, stand up a little bit, get some rest, both brain and physical. And then extend yourself by trusting in others and some of those services and software that is out there. Listen, check this out. This is a great podcast episode. I love this stuff. Again, my name is Gary Roth. I'm in the Army. I'm also a uh, small business owner, blue collar consulting group. I love time management. I love organization. I love things, you know, nice and neat and dress right dress and all that stuff that we say in the Army. I freaking love it. And so I want to share that with you and I want to make your life more productive. So uh, you can find us on Twitter, blue underscore leadership. You can find us on Instagram, BCCG2000. No, excuse me. That's the old one. BCCG 
underscore main like main street and of course gary at blue collar consulting group.com and you know that you can find us on the website triple dub blue collar consulting group.com we're going to be on there we're going to be blogging we're going to be podcasting baby we're going to do it all we're going to do it all but listen if you know somebody that's a professional that wants to take their time management to the next level send them this episode if you are trying to go to the next level, follow the advice in this podcast. And you know what? If you want to help some people, sharing is caring. It costs you nothing. I encourage you to share this episode so that others can improve their time management. So thank you for listening. I'm glad that you're here. I'll see you later. Bye.